This is the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Welcome back to Trending. We are looking at what the Catholic Church teaches about the body and soul because we're in the midst of this identity crisis and it's not just kids identifying as transgender. It's not just adults. It's everyone. We're at a point where we say, who am I? What am I? What do I believe in? What am I made for? This is why we've been working through this Theology of the Body series here on Trending. Now, a couple weeks ago, the San Francisco Archbishop Salvador Cordelioni and Oakland Bishop Michael Barber came out with a joint document called The Body and Soul Unity of the Human Person. It is excellent. I highly recommend you read it. You could read it in probably about 15 minutes or so. And it helps to solidify what the Catholic, for you, if you read it, what the Catholic Church has always taught on human sexuality, gender, marriage, and how this impacts a gender crisis. The document starts by Archbishop Cordelioni and Bishop Michael Barber acknowledging the influence of gender ideology and how it's become pervasive in contemporary society. You may have a friend, family member, colleague, meet someone at the laundromat, at the local coffee shop, your check or at the grocery store. I've had it happen in all of these scenarios time and time again, from living in in California to living in Michigan to traveling to Alabama to traveling to Mississippi. It is everywhere. The body, soul, unity of the human person, where the bishops say many of the faithful and those who serve in our ministries have raised questions about the complex and sensitive topic of gender. They wrote a letter to provide clarity and resources with regard to the teaching of the Catholic Church concerning the nature of the human person. It reads, gender ideology is in many important respects radically opposed to a sound understanding of human nature. They start by addressing the problem of gender ideology itself. Here are some of the key problems. It denies certain fundamental aspects of the human existence, such as male and female sexual differences, the reciprocal complementarity of man and woman, the essential unity of body and soul in the human person. It denies the anthropological basis of the family as founded on the biological differences between male and female. In other words, what they're saying is what the church teaches about the human person is that we are male or female. There's no in between and no confusion. How we're created, male and female, complements one another. We're a unity of body and soul. So you can't be a man stuck in a woman's body or a woman stuck in a man's body. In addition to this, the anthropological basis of who we are as people is rooted in family, in the biological differences between men and women and the generative dimension of the body, that is the ability to have children. The letter states that gender ideology is thus opposed to reason, it's opposed to science, and it's opposed to a Christian view of the human person. Because God is the creator of science. God is the creator of nature. Now, the church many, many years ago already rejected heresies having to do with dualism, that is the separation of body and soul. God doesn't make mistakes. You are one body and soul, not a man trapped in a woman's body, as Bruce Jenner claimed that he is when he first came out all those years ago in 2015. Boy, how the world changed almost in an instant, pushing the transgender ideology after his coming out celebration on national television. See, the body and soul, the document says, come into existence together in an individual human being at the time of conception. This is key. The body and soul come into existence together in an individual human being at the time of conception. We need to understand this body-soul unity. The document by Archbishop Cordelioni and Bishop Michael Barber says the body is an integral and indispensable aspect of what it means to be a human person. As it continues to go on, the bishops say being man or being woman is a reality which is good and willed by God. Do we really believe that? Not just if we're struggling with gender identity, do we understand being a man or being a woman is a reality that is good and willed by God? But they also understand the challenges. They go on to say, consequently, one can never be said to be in the wrong body. For this reason, the Catechism of the Catholic Church actually explains man may not despise his bodily life. Rather, he is obliged to regard his body as good and to hold it in honor since God has created it and will raise it up on the last day. Do you see that part where the church has taught that we can't, as faithful Catholics, despise and hate our bodies? And I'm not just talking about if you struggle with transgenderism, all of us need to hear this. Things we hate about our bodies from 
weight to the way things are formed. We're called to embrace and love our body, honor it as God's creation, the creation which God will raise body and soul one day into heaven. The bishops go on to say the male and female sexual differences and complementarity are also essential to a Christian understanding of the marital conjugal union, which is itself an image of Trinitarian communion. Eliminating this difference would diminish in man and woman part of what it means to bear God's image and likeness. So in other words, the bishops are pointing to the fact that God created us in his image and likeness. And the complementarity of the male and female body, the ability to have children, that is all of this centered in family life, is in part, one of the ways we are created in God's image and likeness. The ability to create, the fact that we're created in a communion of persons. Every person has a mom. Every person has a dad. The two come together to create a new life and are called in total self-giving life, giving love to give of themselves and the raising of that child. This is part of what it means to live a Trinitarian life. And when we reject gender, when we reject the complementarity of male and female, when we reject the ability to have children, when we destroy the ability to have children with everything from transgenderism, sterilization, puberty blockers, abortion, we're actually rejecting God's creation. We're rejecting being made in God's image and likeness. This is what happens when we fall away from an anthropological view of the human person that's centered on God as creator and us as humble, dependent creatures upon God and his vision, his blueprint for the body. So how do we approach the struggle of gender ideology in our culture? How do we approach it when someone we know and love is identifying as transgender? The document from Archbishop Cordelioni, Bishop Michael Barber, dive into this as well. How do we approach the struggle of gender ideology in our culture? It's in our own lives and family. The, the document says the church is called to do as Jesus did to accompany in a spirit of solidarity those marginalized and suffering while affirming the beauty and truth of God's creation. Listen to this. Truth is the light that gives meaning and value to charity. Without truth, charity degenerates into sentimentality. Love becomes an empty shell. Did you hear that? If we are compassionate, if we are charitable, that requires that we are truthful. Otherwise, charity without truth isn't charity, but it's sentimentality. And as the bishop said, love becomes an empty shell. They go on to say, compassion does not include both truth and charity, is as a misplaced compassion. So I'll rephrase that. Compassion that does not include both truth and charity is a misplaced compassion. So if you're trying to be compassionate or empathetic, but you're not including both truth about the human person and the love of God, then that is not compassion. They say support for those experiencing gender dysphoria must be characterized by an active concern for genuine Christian charity and the truth about the human person. So recognize this difference because I think this is key. We all have loved ones who are doing things that we don't agree with, living adverse lifestyles. There's a total difference between loving someone and approving their behavior. A person and their behavior, we have to be able to separate as two things. Love the sinner, not the sin. Now, compassion is radically different from approval, and that's key to being able to navigate and love the church's teaching on gender ideology, but also love ourselves and those who are struggling with gender. Charity requires that we are honest. What do you do if you experience gender dysphoria? What does the church teach? What does it mean to be a person? I think this is something all of us need to hear, even if we aren't struggling with gender dysphoria. All of us have moments of struggling with our identity as male and female, of embracing the complementarity of maleness and femaleness. This entire episode of Trending with Timory is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay, download the app today, and thanks for listening. <laughs>